this is Royal Youth Mentorship Program. Uh, you're most welcome. My name is Matthew Mugo. Uh, I am in Nairobi. Uh, that's where I am doing this from. And uh, I welcome all of you who have come in and uh, as many as are joining in. Uh, and I uh, want to say that uh, it's such an honor and a privilege to see all of you here. Uh, you've chosen to just be here. I know you would be doing other things, maybe, you know, watching your, your movie uh, or something, preparing for the new supper and that, that's such kind of stuff. But you've chosen to be here. And uh, it's such an honor and I, do, I do not take it for granted. Uh, what is Royal Youth Mentorship Program? I want to, just for those ones who are joining for the first time, this, I would call it, is a passion project, really. Uh, I am this guy who has been very passionate uh, for quite a, a bit of time uh, on youth mentorship. Uh, we've been doing this with my wife. So how do we run this? We have been doing this Tuesdays, Thursdays, and uh, Saturday, 8 to 9 p.m. And uh, we, every two weeks, we have another session we call accountability and uh, feedback, or rather accountability and taking action session. Tonight, we have one, Waihiga Mwaura. Um, I must say that I am so privileged. I feel so privileged that I could approach Waihiga and he could, uh, you know, return this with a yes. Mr. Waihiga, take it up from there. Um, uh, as always, first to confirm that everybody can hear me. Just, you just nod your head or do a thumbs up like this and I know you can. Great, great. Uh, thank you for this opportunity, uh, Matthew, and uh, the fellowship for the gathering that is this mentorship team for giving me an opportunity to share. Um, let me allow those who need to settle down and mute their mics to do so. Uh, my name is Wahiga Mwaura. I'm a news anchor and a special features reporter at Citizen TV. I also moderate events and do a few other things on the side. Um, I've been asked to speak on a topic that is very interesting because when I was first asked about it, I wondered if I really am the best person to talk about it. And also because uh, one's life is a journey and I find that I am on the younger side of that journey. And I wondered whether somebody in their 50s or 60s would be better place to talk about brand integrity because they have seen their brand over 40, 50 years. You know, when I look at brand integrity, it's not a sprint, it's a marathon. And so while I am privileged to speak, I, I wonder if I'm the best. Nevertheless, I will give it my best shot. Uh, I look at the 66 participants here and I wonder if there are those who might have better things to say than me. But nevertheless, uh, to the organizers of this, I am honored. And uh, if you give me a minute or so, I will share my screen as I share a little bit about what I wanted to present. But in terms of a history, uh, I think I have... Uh, I would say my claim to fame has been in media because many of you may not have known me before then. I've been working at Citizen TV now going on to 11 years as a journalist. I've done different things while I was there. I did some sports for a while before I got into main news. Uh, of course, there are many challenges in the media in line with your brand and with integrity, but I normally like to think of it as the same challenge a lawyer, a doctor, a scientist would face. And so, you know, the same challenges you are facing in your field, I am facing in my field. Uh, but let me show my presentation, then maybe we can get into some personal experiences. There we go. Okay. How, how uh, is that? It is. Perfect. It's okay. okay. Brand integrity. And the question that I want you to think about today is what do people think about you, especially when you are not in the room? Okay. What do people think about you, especially when you're not in the room? And uh, before we get into very heavy uh, definitions, I want to show you four gentlemen, and I want you to chat to, with me very quickly. When you see those four men, uh, some are alive, some are not. These are great men, either from Africa or of Africa, great in that we know about them. I want you to tell me what you think about their brand. If you are an outgoing president of Kenya, okay? And you needed to hand over to a man who you believe, or a man or a woman who you believe will be able to take Kenya in the right direction with the challenges of COVID, corruption, budget, all the challenges that you have. And you have these four men before you. In terms of their brand, what do you think about them that would judge or gauge how you make decisions? And I want to see on the group chat uh, what some of you would say today. I hope you recognize all of them. Uh, Barack Obama, former president of the United States. Omar al-Bashir, former president, Sudan. The late Nelson Mandela and the late Robert Mugabe, uh, one of South Africa, the other of Zimbabwe. 
I'm waiting to see uh, a few of your thoughts. I'm trying to make this as interactive as possible. Let's imagine we are meeting in a conference hall somewhere. Okay, so you say, okay, tell me why. Don't just say the, the who, but why. Why that person? And if, you, and if there are those you, you would not choose, tell me why you would not choose them. And I'm, I'm guessing you've never met them. You've never sat with them, but somehow you guys are able. Okay, so let me read your feedback. Samuel Mwangi says, I don't trust any. Okay, that's, that's good. I wish you could tell me why. I'm seeing a lot of movement around Barack Obama and Nelson Mandela. Okay, Joshua Morim is getting specific. You say Mandela selflessness. Carol, you've said Mandela selfless. Mandela, man of the people. Mandela, selflessness, okay. Obama, he led the great USA, okay. Maybe we take one or two more, then I'll take you to the next slide, okay. Mandela, patriotic and selfless, uh, sacrificial, good repute. Wow, okay, peace and social economic, okay. And, and this is a man who has been gone for a long time, and yet you people are saying such good things about him. Obama, empathetic and hopefully, and hopeful, led the U.S. through an economic crisis. Okay, we'll keep sharing them. But what each of you have shared are snippets of the personal brands of these gentlemen. You know, in the past, personal brands were seen as brands of companies and organizations and so forth. But in the kind of world we live in and this gig economy where people are now being hired because of what they bring to the table, your personal brand is sometimes more important than your skill level or your ambition or your determination because it is what will get you work and it's what will deny you work. And already you people have denied two gentlemen on this uh, screen work and you haven't met them just because of their reputation, which is their brand. Let's go through a few definitions um, at this time. Okay, good, I've seen how to do this. What is a personal brand? Okay, Jeff Bezos, the founder of Amazon, I know some of you might ask, is he a good example of personal branding depending on what you think of him? He's quoted as saying, your brand is what people say about you when you are not in the room. When they say, Genya you, is the best I could think about it. That is what your brand really looks like. And I was quite concerned when I, when I heard this because I wondered, what do people say about me when I'm not in a room? Um, the term branding previously was reserved for businesses, but now that you have social, social media and the gig economy, the economy of Uber and Airbnb and all these things, Personal branding has become fundamental. In a nutshell, I would say a personal brand is a unique combination of skills and experiences that make you who you are. It is how you present yourself to the world. Remember, I've been asked to speak about brand integrity. I first wanted to define brand before we get to the integrity part. Uh, brand integrity, again, is a term that was first used for products and services. So a company with high brand integrity is a company whose word you could trust, okay? And the Kenyans online nowadays are very particular on brands they trust and brands they don't. There are particular brands, I'm not getting to naming them in case you work for them or you own them, but there are particular brands that provide uh, telecommunication services, that provide internet services, that are notorious for not picking phone calls when their services are down. Uh, some are even state parastatals. Mm -hmm. You, would, you could say their integrity is at, a, is at a low because what they promise is not what they deliver. And while it will be impossible for you to deliver you know, excellent services for everyone, nevertheless, there should be a base by which you go with this company, at least the bare minimum is that they will provide one, two, three, four. Now convert that to you as a person. How are you perceived? Two things, your image, and your reputation. That is your brand integrity, okay? And while Wahiga's brand integrity might not satisfy everyone, there should be some basic expectations that when you're engaging with Wahiga, this, you can expect one, two, three, four. I don't know whether you guys have heard people saying that for a gentleman so-and-so, uh, he's a man of his word. Lakini, timekeeping, ayuko poa. So at least he is known to be, uh, he will follow it through, but your product might delay, you know? So, so those are the nuances of brand integrity. But in a nutshell, when, you, when you're thinking of yourself tonight, ask yourself, how do people perceive me? That is your image. And how and what do they say about me? Especially when I'm not in the room. That is your reputation. All right. Uh, why should I care about this brand integrity that Wahiga is talking about today? 
It might surprise you to learn that in the world that we live in, it's not just your talent or your ambition that will get you the long-term success you are looking for. Now, I hope I'm speaking to individuals who are looking for long-term success. I'm not looking for short-term success. I don't want to be that guy who is profiled in the papers today as a billionaire or a millionaire or top of the game, but five years from today, you don't know where they went to. There's a problem with that. And unfortunately, that's the world worships individuals like that. I am looking for success that will last for years because it is built on a foundation. And one of the things that they are telling us is key in your foundation is that brand integrity. How do you uh, identify different aspects of brand integrity? Well, there's authenticity. Authenticity is, uh, not, I would say, the opposite of being fake, okay? You know individuals who are fake. What they present in public is very different from what they present in private. Uh, and, and for good brand integrity, you must be said to be an individual who is authentic. Secondly, you should be transparent. It should be easy to know everything about you. Uh, and, and I say this, when you look at how our, our media, and we've made a few mistakes with this, how we've profiled young businessmen in this country, a lot of them are not transparent. You know, we talk about people who are 30 or 35 and have, you know, are worth a billion shillings. But when you try and probe the source of that wealth, you know, they'll give you some long-winded statement about export, import, uh, government tenders, but they can't quite tell you how they made their money. What I'm looking for is an individual who, can, who you can trace every shilling where it came from. You know, when, when, when you talk about Mark Zuckerberg, when you talk about Jeff Bezos, you may not like them, you may like them, but you can trace the source of their wealth. You can identify there is this company and because of this, that is why this guy is a billionaire. But in Kenya, we have many people with very big brands but they are not transparent. You cannot identify or trace their journey from where they started to where they are now. And of course, a key aspect of brand integrity is sincerity. And that is a challenge in this country, uh, in, in Africa, because one, uh, Africans, we are not very good at being sincere. Uh, I might not give a very good talk today, but a lot of you will feel pressure to tell me I did well. That's not a good thing. In other countries, they'll tell you, you did poorly. Your presentation was poor. It's not that you're trying to put me down, but I think we now live in a society where a measure of sincerity is required. We need to be sincere with our leaders, for example. When we, when we meet our leaders, it's not just to tell them they are doing a good job so that we get favors, but because there are problems you know, in the society that we live in, we need to learn to be sincere with them, with our family, with our friends, because when you are sincere with an individual, you build them. And so a good brand is one that is sincere, in the feedback it gives, but also I think in the feedback that it can receive. And these are all critical components of the brand experience today. Now, stats, let me give you some stats. According to a 2018 Career Builder Survey, of course the survey wasn't collected in Kenya, it was done overseas, but whatever happens overseas quickly makes its way to Kenya. 70% of employers use social media to screen candidates during the hiring process. And 43% of employers use social media to check on current employees. If your social media is indicative of who you are, and if you have no brand integrity, which shows on your social media as well, then it, it could cost you a job, it could cost you a board membership, it could cost you even a cabinet position in the future. So brand integrity is not just something to feel good about. It is something that could have a direct effect on your prospects in the future. And I believe that the 2010 constitution the makers of it were very aware that unlike in the past, they wanted the men and women that will serve in public positions to have brand integrity. And that is why they put uh, chapter six of the constitution on, on what uh, men and women of integrity should be like uh, and what to do when people step away from that integrity in terms of impeachment. But also they put in so many checks and balances to ensure that anyone who steps away from their integrity is kept in line or is removed and that sort of thing. So it is something that Kenyans wanted and they reflected that in the constitution. And we're having a, you know, we've been having a lot of discussions about is it time to change the constitution? Depends on, 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 on where your stand is. But if you look at the spirit of the 2010 constitution, it was to have brand integrity in the men and women that will serve in government. And they were very clear on that. And they went overboard to put checks and balances in place for, for whoever would serve in government moving forward. Warren Buffett, famous man. Uh, when I talk about long-term success, this is what I'm talking about. You can trace his path 
uh, and he remains relevant till today. He says that integrity is what you are when you are in the dark or when people are not looking. Okay, so we defined brand, but now we're getting into the integrity part of it. Your brand is what people say about you. Your brand is what you portray to the world. But integrity is what you portray to the world when nobody is looking. So in your secret place. So it's a bit more complicated in that a lot of people can hide whether they are men of integrity or not by a public face. And I'll be getting to that shortly. But, you know, event, you can't lie to. You can lie to a few people sometime, but you can't lie to everyone all the time. You will eventually be called out. Uh, and this is basically your personal trait or your personality trait when you have nothing to lose, okay? Warren Buffett once defined integrity as this. Are you willing to have any contemplated act, anything you've thought of? It's a, maybe think of a business deal, a partnership, a relationship, uh, whatever it is. Would you be willing to have it appear the next day on the front page of a newspaper to be read by your spouse your children, and your friends. And this article has not been done by any fake or quack journalist. It's been done by a well-informed and critical reporter. That is his integrity standard. So when he gets into a business deal, when he sells a company, when he's thinking of retrenching employees or hiring or making tough decisions, he's also asking himself, if this leaks to the press, will I be proud? Will I be worried? Will it be said that I made the best decision on difficult times or did I take an easy route? And you can ask this about your life, the decisions that you're making today, tomorrow. Uh, you know, for those of us who are in media, we face this more than uh, some of you might because our decisions are scrutinized uh, you know, every step of the way. Uh, when I pick a phone call from a stranger, I don't know. If I respond to them badly, could someone be recording? If I have a, a, a disagreement with someone in public, if I start punching them, you know, it's very easy for someone to pull out a phone and record and post it out there. And so you have to think twice about everything you do in public. And it's not just about us who are in media, but with these phones and with social media, your act today can be famous tomorrow. And so would you want your, that to be something that people will know about you and, and will talk about you uh, in a manner like that? So that's something to think about. And just to add on to, to, to this, there's an example of a company called AED, which in 2011 was forced to pay more than $5 million to settle false claims allegations. According to the US government, they had failed to provide oversight and management of USAID products. As a result, the US government received substandard service and products at inflated prices. Does that sound familiar? Now, because of this fine, they lost their goodwill with USAID as well, okay? And so they lost that tender. And they were not able to recover from the fines and lack of business from their largest donors. And they eventually wound up their operations. They had to sell their assets after 50 years of operation, where they supported and helped millions over their lifetime. Because of some decisions that were made between 2010 and 2011, brand integrity of the brand, which of course res, res, uh, you know, comes down to brand integrity of the decision makers in that company, everything that they had worked for for 50 years ended up in nothing. So can you ignore brand integrity? Yes. But what is the possible cost, not just to you as an individual, but to the products that you want to build for the few years that God has given us on this earth? You need to think about that. But there are challenges with this brand integrity thing. Oprah Winfrey once said that real integrity is doing the right thing, knowing that nobody's going to know whether you did it or not. That's correct. And, and we've repeated that from others. But if you practice situational ethics, I think it's a very Kenyan thing. You do the right thing only when you're in the public eye. You are not really a person of high integrity. You're just pretending to be one. Okay? And let's talk about the nurturing of the ordinary or the average Kenyan. The average Kenyan grows up in a home where your father or your mother or your guardian tells you one thing in public, but does a different thing in private, okay? And the struggle for many teenagers in this world is your father or mother will tell you alcohol is wrong, but they will take it as they deny you uh, the ability to take it. And they'll tell you it's wrong and you don't understand. You go to school where a teacher tells you this and this is wrong, but you see them doing it. 
And by the time you get to the workplace, you've been so cultured in that there is a way to behave in public and in private that you also will practice this situational ethics. And I think one of the uh, questions we could discuss a little bit uh, during the Q&A is how to get out of situational ethics because we see this also in government quite a bit. I'm, a, I'm an investigative journalist uh, and I also do interviews. One of the things I look out for when I'm about to interview a high profile person is where have they shown situational ethics, okay? Where have they said one thing in public but done a different thing in private, okay? For example, let's talk about a Ministry of Health official who in public will tell you that large gatherings are not allowed, okay? But in private, you will see them attending a large gathering. Now to the average Kenyan, that sends a message that uh, large gatherings are allowed as long as you are not caught. And yet you know that COVID-19 uh, is best transmitted in a large gathering like that. And so it leaves many confused. Or you see a person saying, we don't do this, but you know, in a, in a different scenario, they do that. And it's a challenge that we then as journalists try to bring out where there is uh, a, a situational ethics situation where a person in, in, in a place of power or in high office says one thing, but does another, and that is where we try and catch you, you know, on that thing. But it's a chance for us to reflect that for me in my personal life, where am I practicing situational ethics? It doesn't mean that we're all perfect. I don't stand here today on a moral high horse. Uh, we all have our struggles, but the, 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 the more we confront situational ethics head on, you know, the more a transparent and authentic life we should live and if our personal brands are transparent and authentic, we are more likely to run organizations that are transparent or authentic as well. When, when I think about how to build brand integrity, I know many of you would have other examples, but one study I read said that you need to decide from the onset what you want your brand to be remembered for, okay? And so for any young people listening to me today in your 20s, uh, 20 to 30s, you must decide from the very beginning what your brand must be, rem be remembered for. I remember many years ago when I was applying for a job, this is an example I've shared many times, if any of you have ever heard me speak before, and an opportunity came to bribe for a job, okay? Uh, we already had been given the job, but there were some uh, other qualifications we needed, and uh, they, they were simply very difficult to get. In a nutshell, we needed uh, medical records uh, at a, from a public hospital, and they needed the blood samples, stool samples, and urine samples. And they were demanding for them on the spot. Uh, you know, the hassle of giving your blood, the hassle of trying to get a stool sample on the spot was just too difficult for many people. And they decided that they were going to bribe, you know, the, the doctor there, again, I won't mention the institution in case any of you work there, but the doctor there came up with a quick solution. There were about 200 of us. And he said, if 200 of you can give me 200 shillings, I will clear all of you, okay? And that will come to about 40,000 shillings uh, that he would uh, go home with uh, for that day. And I, I think in this day and age, if I can make 40,000 very quickly, uh, that's not a bad day's work. And uh, many people chose to go that way. In fact, I can say with confidence, 90 to 95% of the people I was with that day at that hospital chose to give that money. But for me, it really was an ethical dilemma because on one hand, I really needed the job. On the other hand, I knew that how I define my brand from the beginning will have an impact on where I eventually end up. And so I made a hard decision to go and look for those samples. It wasn't easy. I, I, I won't sit here as an angel and say it was a decision I made immediately, but I was glad that, you know, till today I have no shame when I look back over the decision I made that day. Decide from the onset what you want your brand to be remembered for. Two, experts out there, I mean, some of these points I'm getting from Forbes magazine, they say, Honesty is the best policy for your brand. And number three, maintain a consistent moral code. Even while those around you are going different ways, even while other things are happening out there, maintain a consistent moral code. As I wrap up, integrity in the center of all these other aspects, ethics, honesty, trust, and your personal conduct. And there are benefits to this. When I look at the lives of when I look at the lives of former African presidents who have practiced personal brand integrity and, and retired and went on to do other things, these are people who are now sought as, as, as keynote speakers. When you look at Barack Obama, he holds his, I mean, 
fine. You could say that there were questions ar around certain things in, within his administration, but none of them ever personally touched him. And he can speak as a voice of authority even today for many years to come. The Nelson Mandela Foundation runs till today on the basis of the integrity of the brand of who he was so many years after he has passed on. And I think one of the be beautiful things about brand integrity is that it will outlive you. Nobody wants to die and be forgotten. In this country, we, have, we keep talking about uh, uh, what is your uh, legacy. If you want to build a legacy that outlasts you, then practice personal brand integrity. And you will find that men and women will still speak of you, you know, in such positive note when you are gone. Uh, and so for me, integrity is the cornerstone. It's in the center of this graphic that I'm showing you, but around it are ethics, conduct, trust, and honesty. And a cartoon here that says that, again, it's been repeated quite a bit. I would say that brand integrity means doing what is right, even if it hurts. And there are some birds there that are repeating, especially if it hurts, especially if it hurts. And when I look around me, I can say that brand integrity has defined the journey for many journalists. The interesting thing about the field that I work in, media, is that media in, you know, in Kenya is very brutal. You'll find that there are people who are on top for a few years and then you quickly, you, you, you stop hearing about them. And many times you wonder what happened to them. For some of them, maybe they chose to step away, move to another path. But for some of them, it is brand integrity that affected them because they got involved in things uh, that were detrimental to their brand and, and media is heartless. You know, once it kicks you out to make a comeback is, is very, very difficult. And so I have witnessed this and, and I, I, you know, when I speak to young journalists, I tell them that your brand is more important than many other things. You can be very successful and very talented. You can have, you know, be in the right place at the right time. You can know the right people. You might have the right ambition and drive, but if you don't have brand integrity, you will lack the staying power, you know, to keep you in, uh, to keep you in there, you know, while you're at it. And so it's something very important to remember. Uh, but finally, as I reflect on where we are in terms of leadership, uh, when you look at COVID-19, the impact it's having around the world, what, what are people saying about leaders, how they're handling it? And also when leaders have been affected, like, you know, we've had people losing their lives because of COVID-19, uh, even African leaders, what is said about them after they are gone? That I think for me is a, is a real example of what their brand integrity was. And I guess I always ask myself, is that how I want to be remembered? So uh, that's a little bit about my thoughts about this topic. Uh, I, I reflect on people like uh, the, auditor, the former Auditor General, Edward Ouko, a person who uh, really put county governments and national government in check and, and at the end of the day, he was able to reflect and say, I, you know, I did my part. Uh, while there were attempts to compromise my office, I did my part to, uh, you know, keep, uh, you know, resources and keep people accountable, which took personal brand initiative, personal initiative. Uh, those are just uh, some of my thoughts of people who've stood up in this country. There are many people who have good brand integrity in this country, and uh, I think we should do well to emulate them uh, at this time. Thank you for listening to me.